Hey, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another Aussie Arts video. Today I'll be going over how I made this sick Cybertruck model in Blender. I'll cover all aspects of it. If you guys are new here, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. I'm trying to grow my channel. Leave a like on the video. Again, all the resources you need to make this will be in the description. And um, yeah, without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so let me show you how I set up my reference images. I know I get a lot of questions about this on my Instagram, so here you go. Alright, so a link in the description if you want the reference images. And we're just going to drag and drop them in real quick. Probably do it one by one. There we go. Press Alt G just to clear the, the location, bring it back to the center point. And then just bring in all the other reference images. All right, so now we have everything. I'm gonna line them up using a cube, pretty much, right? We're gonna use the cube to make sure they all fit inside of it. So I'm gonna select all of them. By the way, screencast, the bottom left, you can see what keys I'm pressing. It make it easier to follow along. All right, so with everything selected, Let's just bring it up, just line it with the, that red line you see. So if you select one reference image, come down here to this image properties tab. Sorry, this one right here. Go to opacity and you can play with the opacity. So how see-through you want the reference image to be. You can just pick whatever you want basically. So let's rename all of these. So select one, press F2, rename it whatever you want. I'm going to go front. Obviously rename it accordingly. So let's select the side here. Let's rotate it 90 degrees along the Z. And then if we go into side view by pressing 3 on the number pad, you can see it's lined up on the side view, just like we want. So now I'm going to move it to the left a little bit. By the way, the green line is the y-axis, the red one is the x. So let's bring in the front. Let's move this one back along the y, just trying to create a little area. Let's rotate the top one along the x, 90 degrees. And then if we go into top view by pressing 7, we can rotate it along the z, 90 degrees, so that it's facing forwards. There we go. Now we have all of them pretty much almost aligned. Let's bring this one down a little bit, just to line up a bit better. Perfect. Okay. Let's press Shift C to bring the cursor back to the middle point. Let's go into front of view. I'm going to move this front um, reference image to the right a little bit. Try to line it up with that blue line you see. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to use this little seat cushion thing, kind of just eyeball it, get it in the middle of that blue line. That looks about right. That will do, I think. All right, let's bring in the cube real quick. So shift A to bring that in and then go G to grab and then Z1 just to move it up by one. And then press Ctrl A location to apply the location because we did move the cube. So now when we scale it, that's going to be the reference point. So now we have the cube right here. So let's go to object properties. Go down to where it says viewport displays. Drop down menu. Where it says di display as, click bounce. So now it's see-through. Makes it a little bit easier to line up basically. We don't have to go to x-ray mode. So now let's scale along the X. Just until it's touching the um, reference image a little bit, it's lining up a bit better. Let's scale it down along the Z, just line up at the top. So the whole concept is to use this box to make sure all the reference images are in line with each other. So as you can see, the side one here, this top part isn't lined up with the top of the cube, which means the two reference images aren't at the same location or scale. So we could even scale, you don't, you don't want to scale the reference image because then it's going to make it even worse. So what we're going to do, come in here to the front view. And let's bring down the um the front reference just until the line is actually lined up with the box a bit nicer. Now if we go to the um as you can see, we're gonna have to scale the top part a little bit more. Just a tiny bit, just until it lines up to the top. Let's go side view. Now if we zoom in here, you can see we need to bring this one up. So they weren't actually lined up properly before. That's why we're using the um the cube. If you see my Jordan one tutorial, you know exactly what we're doing here. So now it's actually lines up properly, as you can see. So let's scale this backwards along the Y, and then we're going to use that to make sure the top is lined up. The top should be already lined up if I made the reference images um, properly. <laughs> so let's go to top view, pressing 7. And as you can see, it's perfect. It's already lined up. There's no work that needs to be done. So yeah, that's how you set up your reference images. Now let's move on to actually modeling the car. All right, so let's bring in a plane real quick. So shift A, mesh, and then plane. That's what we're going to use to start off. Let's go into edit mode, so tab. Okay, actually, let me just, before that, let's come up here to the top here on the right and go down to this little funnel looking thing and then select this little arrow that you see here. So now if you turn that off, so that basically means that I can't select whichever object I turn off. Because it's kind of getting in the way when I'm trying to select the plane and I'm accidentally selecting the reference image. So now let's go into edit mode and then add a loop cut, so control R to add loop cut down the middle. Let's delete half of it, as usual. Let's add a mirror modifier to it. But this time, do not turn on clipping for once. 
I don't turn it on yet at least, we're going to turn it on later on. So let's go into edit mode, press A, and then let's rotate it 90 degrees along the Y, press enter, let's go front view, and we're just going to line up with the side of the car, or the side of the reference image, if that makes sense. So let's move along the X, it might be a little bit hard to see, because it's orange and the reference image is like brownish, but it's that line you're seeing right there. So just bring it up to the edge, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you go side view, now you can see the plane a little bit better. So let's bring it forward a little bit. Basically, the whole point, I guess the way you would make a car in Blender, or most things, you just use a reference image and you just go from all the different angles, if that makes sense. So press OZ to go X-ray mode. And I'm going to select these and double press G to slide them down. There we go. All right. So we have different edges here, right? So we have this line here, this main one, where the top bends inwards. From like if I go front view, it show you real quick. You can see it's kind of tapered inwards there, right? It's like a little incline or whatever. And then it's flattish on the sides. So we need to keep that in mind while we're making the panels as well. Try to keep everything flowing nicely. So that's going to be a challenge, but let's see. So I'm going to select this corner here, or this edge, sorry. And let's bring it back along the Y. Let me turn off portion of editing. Just drag that along the Y to move it all the way back. Something like that. Then we could do the same thing with the front. Bring that one forward. Just to line up to, with that edge there, as you can see. Let's just pull it back a little bit. Bring this one down along the Z. Something like that. Let's select this and bring this one up. You can see I'm literally just following the reference image. And let's move these back. Just line it up as best as you can. So have to be perfect. Let's select this and then move it back along the Y. So now we have this basic shape here. Obviously it doesn't look like a cyber shock yet, but we're getting there, right? So if you go back into side view, let's see. What should I tackle next? So let's split this up into different panels, like the different doors, etc. So let's add a loop curl right here. Control R. Line it up with that line you can see on the reference image there. Maybe I can pull these ones back a little bit. Something like that. Let's add another one here. Same thing, pull this one back a little bit. Let's add one more for the... You know what, let's let's bring all of these down first, just a little bit. It's kind of a little bit too high right now. So let's add one more loop cut for this back door. Again, bring this back a little bit. Perfect. Okay. So now, we want to separate the, the different panels. So we want a door here, another door here, and then the two sides. So let's start with this front place here, sorry. Let's add a loop cut, Control R, just about there. Obviously, this part of the wheel is going to be hollow for the most part, right? So we can clear that out. So we don't need this whole plane there, basically. So let's add another loop cut right here. Hopefully, it's making sense. Again, if you need help, just hit me up on my Instagram. I'll try to help you out. So let's add one more loop cut here. Hopefully, you can kind of understand what I'm getting at. So let's let these two and bring those back. Just follow the reference image, basically, right? Let's let these two bring those back as well. Something like that. Let me delete this um this middle part. So let's go to face select and then delete these two faces here. There we go. Now we have this right here. Let's get in there. Let's go back into edit mode. Let's do the same thing for this back wheel here as well. So same thing, add a loop cut. You know, position them where you want them. Let's add one more over here. Maybe add another one on top here. Something like that. Let's add one more here for the, these two corners. Perfect. Let's let these two. Let's let these four actually with this back. There we go. Let's let these two bring those back a tiny bit as well. Do the same thing for this back part. Bring those back as well. And then we can delete this middle faces here. Delete faces. The good thing about this car is very like blocky. It's, it's, it's almost a default cube with windows and wheels, basically. So it's going to be a lot easier to model rather than having to make like an organic flowing shape, if that makes sense. So I think this is pretty good for like intermediate beginner users. So let's rename this body. You can rename it whatever you want. Let's go to side view again. Perfect. So now let's separate the two doors. So let's select this middle part and press Ctrl B to add a bevel and just move it to the side. If you scroll up, basically, if you see a line, right, that just added another um, subdivision. So if you scroll up on your middle mouse button, it will add more. If you scroll down, it will add less. So we don't want any in the middle for this part. There we go. So now let's select this edge here and press Shift-R. So Shift-R just repeats the last action you did. In this case, it was a bevel. 
which just makes our lives a lot easier. So let's redo that same thing here. Select them, press Shift R. And as you can see, it gives it the exact same spacing as well. So that's another tip, Shift R, to repeat the last action you did. All right, so now I'm gonna delete these middle faces here. So just delete them basically. Nice, all right, so we deleted those middle faces there. So now that we have this, right, let's make this back piece here. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, but let's see how we can do it. So I'm gonna select these here without the last one. Extrude those up along the Z. And then we can just slide these vertices down. So select one and press G twice. So double press G and slide it down. All right, let's do the same thing here. Slide all of this down. All right, cool. So here, let's select these three. I know I usually say stay away from triangles. Always have quads, but in this case, it doesn't matter because this part is not going to deform anyways. So we can have a triangle at the back there. So now that we have this, let's select this top row here. Let's go to face select actually. Let's select this whole row. Let's go into front view. And we want it to rotate. We want it to line up just like a reference image, right? So before we do that, let's let this edge here. Let's go shift S and then select um, cursor to selected. So that will bring this cursor to whatever point you selected. Right. So let's select the faces again. We're going to use this as our um, pivot point. And press the period key and then select 3D cursor. So what that does is whatever action you do, so rotate, scale or whatever, the pivot point or origin point would be whatever the 3D cursor is. Hopefully that makes sense. In this case, it's right here, which is what we want. Let's say I clicked over here, right? And then I rotate it. The pivot point would be whatever the 3D cursor is, as you can see. And we don't want that. So let's bring it back to the, um, this middle part. There we go. Let's select these faces again. Now we have it selected. Let's go front view or top view, whichever you prefer. I kind of like top view. And we can rotate along the Y just until it lines up a little bit. Something like that. There we go. There we go. Now we have this part here. Now you can see this um this side part here is not fully flat. Let me try to get like a bit better angle. As you can see, some of the edges are kind of like they're not really aligned. So we can select all of them. So all of these. And let's go scale. So S, X, 0. This will flatten it all along the X basically. Now you can see it's perfectly smooth. So go back into the side view. Let's line this up a little bit better. So I'm going to select all of these and bring them up along the Z. Alright, so now that we have this, right, let's go back into this front here, this front part. Let's kind of put some bit more work in here. So now, right now we have this, looks a bit weird. So let's just bring this up. So double press G to slide them up. Let's do the same thing with these bottom pieces. Kind of line up to about there. So now we have this other panel, this front part that we need to extrude. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna add a loop code right about here. So about this, so it lines up with the reference image up there. Let's select these four, like so. And then I'm gonna duplicate them. So Shift D to duplicate. Just bring them out a little bit along the Y. And let's extrude it out. Just until it gets about there, something like that. Now let's select these two and bring them down a little bit. One tip that one thing you should do while you're modeling is just try to um picture how the thing you're modeling would actually look like in real life. There we go. So we have this right. So let's select these and go to top view and let's bring them along the X and line it up just with the reference image. So and as you can see, they kind of panned out. It's not actually in line with each other, and we don't want that. So to fix that, let's go to top view. Let's go scale. Actually, before we do that, press P and then go to medium point because remember we were using the 3D cursor earlier. So now scale Y0 that will line up along the Y. And then let's extrude it along the X. So E and then X. Let's turn on clipping before they actually hit each other. And then let's just move it in along the X. So they meet in the middle. There we go. Let's go into top view and bring it forward a little bit. Again, to just line up with the reference image a bit better. And I might add two more loop cuts in here. So control R and then just add this add one. So with the loop cut selected, Let's go top view and just bring it forward. Just to give it a little bit of a curve, like a slight curve. Don't want it to be completely flat. So this is what we have right now. Get in there. Let's move on to the next part. So let's go back into side view. And let's just double check this is lined up properly, which it isn't. So I'm going to select um, probably these two here, drag those back. Bring this one back as well. Do the same thing with the other ones as well. Try to give it like even space. There we go. All right, now we have this. It's slowly taking shape, isn't it? Looks way better. 
All right, cool. Let's go to side view. So we need to extrude these top edges up real quick. Let's go to edit mode. Let's select, hmm, let's select these. Push them back a little bit, try to line up. Reference image. Don't worry about not lining up at the bottom because you're not going to see this part anyways because obviously it's going to be covered by this little panel. So we'd have to worry about that. So I'm going to select these top ones here. So all of these, because we want to extrude them together so they can be the same height, basically. I don't have to guess what the height is. So let's extrude up, press E to extrude. There we go. Okay, so now let's just line it up. So if you move it backwards along the Y, just line it with a ref reference image a little bit better. So G, Y, move it back a little bit. There we go. Let's make sure they're all lined up properly. Perfect. All right, let's fix this back part because that one kind of tapers the other way, doesn't it? So let's move that one forward. Something like that. There we go. Now we just need to curve this inwards, right? We just need to. So if you go in front of it, you can see, like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of angled in. All right, so let's add a loop cut real quick just to keep everything, you know, the same amount of vertices, keep it all flowing, keep it all even. There we go. All right, so now let's select these top edges here. Let's go to the top view. You can go front view as well. Let's bring along the X. So grab, so G for grab and then X. And then you should get something like this. Perfect. All right, so let's go side view again. I know it's a bit repetitive, but <laughs> that's pretty much how it goes. So let's select this um, edge here and let's just bring it back along the Y just to line up with the reference image. There we go. If you want to see um, how smooth it is, if you come up here to the top right on the shading tab, click the drop down menu, go to matte cap and then just click somewhere in the middle that border you see. And then just choose a matte cap that's like reflective. So any of these you just show you how smooth and flat the surface is. You can pick whatever you want, basically. This, this is more like a metallic one. And also, if you go to cavity, so the drop down menu, go down to cavity, turn that on, and you will see it, gives, it shows you the edges a bit more. And you can play with the ridge and the valley. So the way to think about it, the ridge is kind of like the highlights and the valley is like the shadows. So it just makes it pop a little bit more. All right. So now that we have this, let me just kind of make this. What would you even call this? Like an A pillar? I'm, I'm not a car guy, if you couldn't guess. But let's just. I'm, I'm going to line this up a little bit. So let's bring this up a little bit. Let's add a loop cut. So Control R. It might be hard to see because of the matte cap. There's like a reflection there. So let's bring that up a little bit. And let's select these two front ones here. Let's make sure it's lined up with the top view, which it is. Okay. Let's go back to the side view and let's extrude it forwards. So just E to extrude and just line that up with the reference image. And then let's extrude it one more time going down. Kind of line up with this edge here. There we go. My rotate that a little bit. Bring it down. Let's select this and go into top view and make sure it's lined up with the top view as well. So let's bring it in along the X. So G, X. Bring that in. Perfect. Let's select this and bring that out along the X. Okay. All right, there we go. We get something like this. Getting there. You can see it's taking shape. So we're almost there. Not really, but we are. <laughs> so um, what should we move on to next? Let's see. So we have this. Let's make this front piece here. So let's go to um, X-ray mode. So Alt-Z. Select these two. And then press M at center. So M to merge. And then at center to merge it at the center of the two. And then let's select these four. Press F. Oops, sorry. Make sure you select four, not three. So these four corners, press F. That will make a face. There we go. We get something like that. Nice and easy. Now the whole thing is connected. Let's make this some um, hood part. I think it's called a hood. I don't know. Let's go to top view. And then let's select these two edges here. Sorry, this top one. And then go to top view. And then just like before, we're going to duplicate it first. So Shift D. It'll move along the X just a tiny bit. So there's like a little bit of a gap and let's extrude along the X. So E and then let's move to the X. Let's go side view make sure it's lined up. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go top view. And then now let's bring this, let's bring it forward just to kind of line up with the reference image a bit more. And I'm going to add two more um, loop cuts after that just to line it up with these other two edges here. 
So control R and let's uh, we can drag this down. Let's add another one up here. And now all we have to do is just line up these um, vertices that we made. So just bring them forwards along the Y. So let me line up these front ones a bit better too. All right, so let's look at it from the side just to make sure it's actually lined up properly, which I don't think it is. You can see it's floating. I want it to be further down. So this is why you use both reference images to make sure you, you know, you're getting everything lined up properly. So it's just about alternating between the front, the top and the side, the side reference. So let's bring all of this down, kind of line them up. Maybe bring that one up a little bit, something like that. You can see nice, quick and easy fix. Let's save. By the way, if you guys are enjoying these videos, don't forget to drop a like and hit that subscribe button and help the channel grow. All right, so as you can see, this is very low poly, which means it's got a bunch of vertices, which is good because I mean, if your model looks good low poly, that means it will look even better once you add a subdivision in theory, right? In theory. All right, so to make this look a little bit smoother, right? We can just press W and then go shade smooth. It looks a bit weird. If you go down to this green little triangle, which is the object data, and then go to where it says normals, click the drop down menu and click auto smooth and then set it to something like 10. The higher the number, the smoother it will be basically, the more rounded it will be. I think the way it works is if the angle is lower than 10, it will be sharp. If it's higher than 10, it will be rounded. All right, let's go back into top view real quick. Let's make this um sunroof part thing. All right, so let me just check that everything's lined up first of all. So I'm gonna add a loop cut right here. So control R to add a loop cut. Let's bring this photo about there. And I'm just gonna line up these vertices on the side and making sure they're all kind of evenly spaced. All right, so let's go back into um, top view real quick. So we have two different parts here. We have this kind of L shape part here and then this other part that's kind of separate, which is with the bed. So it's like all of these here, except these bottom ones. So just the top row. And we're going to duplicate those. So shift D and then move along the X just a tiny bit. Just to keep everything separate for now. We can join things later on, but for now we want to keep everything separate. So I'm going to um, extrude along the X with it still selected. It's a tiny bit. And then we just have to align it basically with the um, reference images real quick. Okay. So we got something like this, right? Let's go to side view real quick. See how it's looking. Okay. So now I'm going to select this edge here, this corner, and extrude along the X just to make this other part. There we go. Let's go to side view again just to double check. It lines up. Okay, that's all good. Let's add a loop cut here and, uh, and on the other side as well. Again, just to keep things flowing, you know, nice edge flow. And I'm just going to tie this up a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's come back in here. Let's select this edge here. I'm going to extrude it along the X. It's until it meets in the middle like that. Perfect. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So let's fix this um, top face here. So let's select all of these. Let's go S, Z, 0. So scale Z, 0. Just to flatten it along the Z. Let's go into side view and then we're going to rotate that along the X and line it up. Alright, there we go. Now we have that lining up nicely. There we go. Alright, so, um... Well, this this sunroof... No, not sunroof. This kind of like... What is it called? A truck bed? I don't know. You know what? Let's skip that. Let's move on to the sunroof. So try to find vertices where you can, you know, pull from. So I'm going to select probably these two right here probably up to there you know I might as well use all three let me pull this up just to kind of line them up a little bit better just have to be a bit of a perfectionist isn't it anyways let's select these three here let's go shift D again just to separate them move them a little bit and then extrude along the X until it lines up and I mean I'm pretty sure this piece is just flat let me just double check on the side yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It's just, it's just a flat piece that just lines up right there. So that's that done. We'll have to worry about that. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's go back in the top view. And then let's make the um the windshield real quick. Let's go to the top view. Again, same thing. You want to go into edit mode and then find a bunch of vertices to steal from. So I'm going to select these two. You know, actually, I'm going to select these side ones because it's going to be a lot easier after than selecting the, the top ones. So let's select these two on the side here, on the right side. Shift D again, move it a little bit along the X, and then extrude it until they meet. There we go. So that's pretty flat, nice and pretty good. So top view, I'm just going to add a bunch of loop cuts and just line them up, just like we did with the hood, just like we did with the front like bumper thing. Trying to keep everything flowing. So 
Control R, scroll up to add two loop cuts. And I'm gonna add two loop cuts on this um, top sunroof part. And probably the same for the rest, just moving backward. All right, so that's the end of part one. I know, I know, I, I just had to cut it. I don't wanna make it too long because I know it gets a bit, you know, confusing or whatnot. But yeah, that's the end of part one. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, help the channel out. If you need any help when you're stuck on any parts of this tutorial, send me a DM on my Instagram at AussieArts. And I'm here, I'll see you guys in part two. Should be coming out in a couple days.